even crane. He was born on November 1st in 1871. He was born in Newark, New Jersey. He was also born as the youngest of 14. But before he was born, eight of his, six of his siblings had died. So he was actually just the youngest of eight. Uh, for early education, he was homeschooled. Um, and his parents said he was a very bright kid and that he could read and write at a very early age. He wrote his very first poem at the age of six. Uh, then he later on went into Pennington Seminary, which is like a religious high school that his dad is like the principal of, because his dad is a minister. And for college, he went to Claverack, and he did, was not a very good college student. All he did was you know, show him for literature classes and history classes. For the rest of the time, he spent playing baseball and skipping classes. He then later transferred to Syracuse because he did not like Claverack, and a lot of the same thing happened to show him for literature skipping everything else, and then he eventually dropped out without earning any degree. Uh, he is a realist writer. He wrote poems, short stories, and novels. His first poem that he wrote at six was I'd Rather Have, and it was convincing his parents to give him a dog for Christmas. His first novel was Maggie, A Girl of the Streets. Uh, critics did not like this novel. Uh, they just thought it was not good. It was about a poor girl living her life in a poor part of town. His most famous novel is The Red Badge of Courage, which is about a man in the Civil War. And just, he flees from battle and wants to get injured so he cannot be called a coward. Uh, why he's important, he was an inspiration to many modernist writers and he wrote about the Civil War despite never actually serving. He was born nine years after the Civil War had ended. He's also the most creative, realist writer. He used a lot of metaphors and descriptive words to be image. Uh, so the piece of literature that I'm analyzing is the Red Badge of Courage, the most popular novel. Uh, the story follows uh, a guy in the Union Army, his name is Henry Fleming, and he does not even make it through one battle before he decides to run away and flee. He runs into the woods and finds a dead body there, which really like freaks him out, so he runs out of the woods. And it like changes his perspective and he realizes I have to go back to the army, but I can't. They're just gonna, you know, kick him out for running away. But if he gets injured, then he'll seem courageous. Uh, he runs into the group of wounded soldiers from the battle that he had fought, and he runs into his friends that he made, uh, Jim. But Jim was shot in the side, and he seriously injured, and then Henry wants to help him, but Jim does not want his help, and it causes a lot of drama, and Jim ultimately ends up dying, and Henry is distraught, and he leaves the group of wounded soldiers. Uh, after this, he runs into a different regiment, which is retreating from a battle with Confederate soldiers, and in the panic, he gets hit in the head by a, a rifle. And it is a really hard hit, it knocks him unconscious, and he ends up bleeding. Uh, after this, he wakes up, and he finds his original regiment somehow, and nobody like thinks he ran away, they thought he got shot by a bullet, and that's why his head was cut open. And so, they don't, and he's not gonna correct him, because that's what he was hoping for the whole time. And then he gets treated, and he ends up fighting three more battles with his group, and eventually the flag bearer gets shot and he dies, so Henry will pick up the flag because he's become more courageous over the last three battles that he has been fighting in. And he leads a charge into battle, uh, causing Confederate troops to retreat and even ends up capturing a few of them. And he doesn't get hurt doing this, even though it's very dangerous, which I think is ironic because the only time he did get hurt was during the middle of the analysis, he used, uh, Stephen Crane started writing this book from June 1893 to April 1894, which is pretty speedy, I think, because at the time, he was working as a freelance newspaper writer and editor, and he was just working on it during the nights, and he didn't have a typewriter, he was writing it all by hand. Uh, the reason he wrote this was because he was very interested in the Civil War, and he was he wanted to make money so he could quit his job because he thought that his 
talent was being wasted as a newspaper writer and editor. Um, this is an important piece of literature because it focuses on the psychological effects of war on one man in the war. A lot of Civil War novels previous to what uh, the Red Badge of Courage is focused on like the battles of the Civil War and the armies as a whole and never looking at the one man in the war. Uh, he often used a lot of metaphors and adjectives in his writing and he also used dialect and that, I think he used that to make a lot of like just paint a better picture and you're actually like living the novel. Um, he used quite a bit of metaphors to the point where it made it kind of hard to read and same with the dialect because uh, his friend Jim in the book did not speak proper English. It was very hard to read. Um, he excluded a lot of dates and names from the actual battles of the Civil War, and that was just so he could focus on Henry and what he was feeling and what he was thinking throughout the war. Um, for the third quote, uh, he suddenly lost concern for himself and forgot to look at a menacing fate. He became not a man, but a member. He felt that something of which he was a part, a regiment, an army, a cause, or a country, was in a crisis. He was commonly welded in a common personality, which was originated by a single desire. For some moments he could not flee, not more than a little finger can commit a revolution for a man. Uh, this is a top three quote because it like describes what he wishes would happen. He wished that he could just forget concern for himself and he could just focus on the bigger picture. And, uh, and in the end, it does not happen. He does end up running away. And then also the last sentence of this quote is a metaphor, which is proof of how many metaphors he uses. And in second place, I have, in the shade of its flourishing growth, he stood with grace and self-confident legs, and since nothing can now be discovered, he did not shrink from an encounter with the eyes of judges, and allowed no one <coughs> to keep him from his attitude of manfulness. He performed in his state in the dark, but he was still a man. Once again, that last sentence is a metaphor. Uh, he had ran away in the middle of the day, so it's clearly not dark. Um, also, this is after he has rejoined his original group, so it also, he's become more confident and it shows character development in the story. And it's just, he does not fear like anymore. He's become a courageous man. Um, first place, I think the best quote is, the men dropped here and there like bundles. The captain of the youth company had been killed in an early start of the action. His body lay stretched out in the position of a tired man resting, but upon his face there was an astonished and sorrowful look, as if he had thought some friend had done an ill turn. The babbling man was grazed by a shot that made the blood stream widely down his face. He clapped both hands to his head. Oh, he said and ran, another grunted suddenly, as if a club had struck him in the stomach. He sat down and gazed ruefully. His eyes there was mute and definite. The approach farther up the line, a man standing behind a tree that had his knee joint splintered by a ball. Immediately, he had dropped his rifle and gripped the tree with both arms, and there he remained, clinging desperately and trying for assistance that he might withdraw his hold upon the tree. Uh, I picked this for the best quote because it is a perfect example of the imagery and metaphors he uses to paint a picture in your head, and it describes war like pretty well because he's like not just focusing on who wins the battle, he's focused on the soldiers in the battle and what it, how terrible it was for them and how awful war is. His big idea is pragmatism and he's just, that just means you're focusing on what is the best decision, not the morally right decision. And he specified in the tragedy of the Civil War, uh, some of his works were like just about his life or just poems and whatnot, and nothing to do with the Civil War, but quite a few of his pieces of literature were about the Civil War and how terrible it was. The man who wrote The Red Badge of Courage was named Stephen Crane. The book made him an international celebrity at 24. At 28, he was dead. Stephen Crane had written some extraordinary works of journalism, had published two of the most original novels in the English language, all by the time uh, he would have been graduating from college. When he died, he was already a legend. 
His imprint would be on American writing ever after. Crean absolutely provided a turning point in American literature. He was like a sponge. He could reach up into the air and pull out of the air tendencies that were floating there. The result of this was he created a wholly new way of doing things. He's very much the first modern writer on war. No one had really given me that perspective before of the common soldier in all the chaos of battle. The reading public made much of how incredibly realistic the red badge of courage was. In fact, Stephen Crane had never been anywhere near a war. Readers were astonished to learn that the author was not a grizzled veteran, but a struggling 23-year-old college dropout. The Red Badge of Courage was first serialized in newspapers in December of 1894. A few days after it began appearing, a critic wrote, If you have not been reading The Red Badge of Courage by Stephen Crane, you have been missing one of the best war stories going. inspired many modernist writers, including Ernest Hemingway, and he said himself that he believed that it was the best piece of American literature to date, which is a pretty good compliment coming from a writer that is writing stories of his own. Review. I'm curious, where's he from? Yeah. Most famous novels? Red Badge of Courage. Hmm. Yeah. That was the story where it was the general who got shot in the arm and then he had to later end up getting an amputated. 